Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And I know that I said in a previous lesson that we were going to get in and talk about editing now, but I think before we do that, it's important that we talk a little bit about your user settings, how to create them, what's the most important user setting that you're going to need to know about, and what is the tool that works in conjunction with that setting so that you have all the shortcuts you need at the click of a keyboard button. All right, now as always, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button below this tutorial so that you stay up to date on all the Media Composer tutorials that come out every week. And I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor, Video Guys. And don't forget, if you're looking for Media Composer subscription licenses, use that coupon code of MC101 at one of the links below to get your Media Composer subscription license. And I'm also excited to announce that in this tutorial and moving forward, we're gonna be working with footage courtesy of CineStudy.org. I love CineStudy. I highly recommend you head on over to their website at CineStudy.org to download all kinds of great free practice footage for you to work with. And what I'm gonna do is make the footage for this tutorial and all the tutorials moving forward available. You can check out the link in the show notes below. All right, I think that's enough of an introduction. Let's get into Media Composer and let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I am at the project selection and creation window. And I know that I promised at the end of the last lesson that we were going to talk about editing in this lesson. I think I'm gonna take a one lesson pause because I do want to talk about an important concept, an important tool that every editor needs to understand before they start editing and that is their user settings. Now the user settings is a little bit like a rabbit hole that we can dive you know, head first into. What I wanna do in this lesson is I'm gonna talk about user settings and I'm gonna talk about probably the two most, well, I'll say the one most important user setting and its corresponding tool that you're gonna to need to understand so that you have all of the tools available to you inside of Media Composer at the touch of a button. Now, when we created our first project, you probably noticed right up here that we have a little section called User Profile. Now, right now the user profile is set to My User Profile, and what I'm gonna do is just drop that down. You'll see that we have a few options in here to create a user profile, to import a user profile, or to reveal a user profile on your system. Now for us, we're going to be creating a user profile. You do have the ability to reveal your user profile and then take that user profile, copy it onto a USB key and take it with you. However, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that anytime you run into issues with user settings or with Media Composer in general, what you're always told by Avid Support is to immediately get in, delete your user settings, create a new one, and see if that fixes the issue. So what I normally recommend to people is if they're going to be going and editing on a system that is different than the one that they edit on normally, just to create new user settings from scratch. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can speed up that overall workflow in just a little bit because the last thing you want to do is to remap the whole keyboard and have to get in and remap everything before you get started. All right. So what I'm going to do is just close this window and I'm simply going to drop this down and I'm going to create a new user profile. Now, I love this here. We have three options. Which one do we prefer? Do we prefer Media Composer's preferred settings? Do we prefer the Media Composer Classic user settings? And you'll see as I hover over, I get tooltips saying choosing this option creates a user profile that's inspired by older releases of Media Composer. This includes floating windows and workspaces, keyboard mappings, and more. Now, also, if you're transitioning from an application like Premiere, you'll see that if we hover over, in this case, keyboard mappings are more laid out to what you might be familiar with coming from Premiere. Now, for me personally, I'm a Media Composer editor. I'm simply gonna choose Media Composer and I'm just gonna enter a name. My new name is going to be Edit Man, just for the purposes of this training course. Once I've selected the profile name and I've chosen the preferred profile settings, all I'm gonna do is simply say, okay. Now, to be quite honest, you're not gonna notice too much has changed. However, a lot has actually changed. What you can't see that has happened here is that on my left hand display, we actually now have my composer window on my right display that we can see here. 
I have my bin. So I'm just going to do a little bit of rearranging here. I'm just going to bring the composer window right over here like such. I'm going to bring the timeline over here like such, just so that they sit over top of each other, how we're accustomed to them. And what's also happening now that you can't see on the other display is that the Media Composer background is actually stretching across both displays. Now, if I want to remove that, all I need to do is to simply navigate to Windows. And what I can do is come down to Host Panels and simply deselect display number one. And now, again, you can't see it. What I see on the left screen is my desktop, and I have the Media Composer application over here on the right. Now, in the intro, I did say that we have partnered up with CineStudy for footage for us to work with that I'm very excited about. And you can download this footage from the link in the show notes. This way, you can follow along. Now, one thing I always encourage everybody to do is to watch the lessons through once before you actually follow along side by side. This way, you can retain as much information as you can before you put it into practice. All right. So I've created a new user setting. However, I don't actually see anywhere that I can get in and access these settings that I've just created. So how do we go about doing that? Well, on Windows, we're going to press Command, Shift, and Equals. On the Mac, we're going to press Control, Control, Shift, and Equals. And you'll now notice that we're brought to the Settings window, which includes the Format tab, the Project Settings, User Settings, and Site Settings. Now, these might seem fairly self-explanatory, but I'm going to go over them again anyways. Format is where we can get in, and if we are working in a 3840 by 2160, for example, project, and maybe I want to output at HD quality, I can switch the preset here to switch the raster dimension so that we can export at different raster dimensions. But as always, keep in mind, as I mentioned before, we cannot get in and change the frame rate once we've created it. Now, I'm actually quite happy with this update to the settings window because all of the settings used to be in one window and it was a little bit confusing. Now it's been broken up, so it's fairly straightforward. Any setting that appears in project is specifically a project setting. Anything you alter there only impacts this project. User settings are obviously based on the user. As I switch from project to project, those settings will carry through with me and site settings represent the Media Composer application on your system, meaning any settings you get in and adjust there will always be there. No matter what project you go to, no matter what user you go to, those settings will always be there. Now, we're going to go more in depth into these settings in a later tutorial, because like I said, in this lesson, I really want to focus on one setting and one tool. And that setting is, of course, your keyboard settings and how you're going to get in and make changes to them. What I'm going to do is just drag the settings window right over here to the left. And what I'm going to do is navigate to our user settings. The keyboard settings is a user setting. What I'm going to do is simply scroll down right here to keyboard. You'll see I have a whole bunch of different options here that I actually really like. This is something that's been added recently, especially if you are making a transition from Premiere, from Resolve to Media Composer, or... If you just need to just jump in quickly and just try to figure something out in Media Composer, you actually have a keyboard layout specifically designed for Premiere, specifically designed for Resolve. Now, how you change back and forth between them is fairly straightforward. All you actually have to do is just click the little checkbox, and once you do, whichever keyboard setting is currently active is the one with the shortcuts that you'll currently be using. Now, what I'm going to do is actually just delete these two. I'm just going to select them by holding shift on the keyboard. I'm just going to delete them because for me, I really only focus on my Media Composer keyboard settings. And for me, I could delete these, but I'm going to leave them here just for the sake of having them. But like I said, for me, I focus on this main keyboard setting. Now, I'm just going to double click on it to open it. And I want to draw your attention to something right off the bat. Now, if you're coming from an application like Premiere, like Resolve, you may be accustomed to your keyboard settings, your shift keyboard settings, your shift alt keyboard settings, your alt keyboard settings, your shift alt and control keyboard settings, your control keyboard settings. Your, you understand where I'm going with all of this. There are so many potential shortcuts that you can add to your keyboard. To be honest, I don't know how anybody keeps track of them. Inside of Media Composer, you have two options. You have the standard keyboard layout and you have the shift keyboard layout. You'll even notice you don't have access to the numeric pad on the keyboard. Now, I'm going to make a crazy recommendation right here. 
And the crazy recommendation that I'm going to make is that when you are setting up your keyboard settings, leave the actual keyboard itself exactly the same. Do not make any changes to it. If you want to add keyboard shortcuts, add them to the function keys across the top and the shift key when you apply it on the keyboard. Now, why is that? The reason that that is, is that if you ever have to leave your house and go to another media composer station somewhere else and start editing, if you leave the keyboard settings pretty much exactly the way that they are now, you will be able to sit down, start working, no issues. And as you work, you'll be able to apply shortcuts to the keyboard as you need them instead of having to take about like an hour to remap all of these keys because you're accustomed to remapping the entire keyboard. So that is something important to keep in mind. All right. Now with tool tips, we can simply hover over any of the keys and I can see exactly what the keyboard shortcut does. Now, to be honest, there's really only seven keyboard shortcuts that are imperative that you know before you get rolling. And they are the in and out points, the lift and cut, meaning you can extract something from the timeline and leave a space, or you can cut it out, meaning it's removed from the timeline and everything is pulled together. You then have your insert or splice in and overwrite key, insert being basically a ripple edit. You're going to put something in the timeline. Everything is going to be pushed down. You have your overwrite command, which is to basically take a clip and drop it in over top of what was there previously. And last, but certainly not least, the L key on the keyboard which is to play your timeline. Now you'll notice that we actually have a few ways to play the timeline. You have the five key, you have the L key, and you have the space bar. Now keep in mind, that's a toggle. When you press the L key once, it will start playing. If you press it multiple times, this is the L key, it will play at double speed, triple speed, quadruple speed. And at any point, if you want to stop playing, you can simply hit the space bar. Now, normally the way that I edit is I have my left hand on the keyboard, and my right hand on the mouse. This way I always have my thumb on the space bar to toggle, play and stop, and I can use my fingers to work around the other keyboard shortcuts. Now I say the other keyboard shortcuts, so of course that does beg the question, since there's seemingly no way to add any keyboard shortcuts to this, how do I do it? Well, that is where the tool comes in that I'd mentioned earlier. What I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to navigate up to the tools dropdown and I'm going to come right down here to the command palette or the shortcut on the keyboard is control three for Windows, command and three for the Mac. What we're going to do here is I'm actually just going to close my user settings here. I'm just going to place my keyboard right up here and I'm going to place the command palette directly below it just so that we can zoom in a little bit on it. Now you'll see that we have an absolute ton of shortcuts that we can come in and we can add to our keyboard or as they are called inside the command palette commands. Now let's talk about one that I use all the time and that is the extend key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the trim category and here is extend. What does extend do? It lets you, for example, if you have a clip on video track one and you want to extend it down your timeline to simply add an out point and click extend and it will pull that out edit down as far as you have your out point marked to it. It's something I use all the time and I will show you in practice how it works, but it's something that I want to map to my keyboard. So to map it to my keyboard is actually fairly simple. All I'm going to do is simply take the extend key, choose the key that I want to map it to. Let's just use F2 as an example, and I'm going to drag it and drop it. And now F2 is mapped as extend. That functionality also extends down to the composer window as well. Anywhere that you see a button like here across the top of the timeline, or here along the bottom of the composer window, you can take the shortcuts and drag them and drop them there, and they will now appear there for you to use. Now you'll notice that right now I have the little pointy finger, meaning that I'm actually taking and moving stuff around. Once I was to close the command palette and the keyboard settings, this would then be an actual command for me to use. Now, let's talk about another scenario. You'll notice down here at the bottom of the command palette, we have a button to button reassignment, the active palette, and something called menu to button reassignment. So what do these three functions actually do? 
Well, button to button reassignment is what I just showed you. It's basically taking a button from inside of the command palette and then assigning it to a button on your keyboard or a button on the composer window or the timeline. The active palette once selected means that all of these commands are now active for me to use much like they were mapped right here. So conceivably, if I wanted to put the command palette down here and I had clips in my timeline, I could actually use these as actual commands to do things in my timeline. I'm going to be honest with you, I never use it for that ever. I really only use it for the button to button reassignment and the menu to button reassignment. What is menu to button reassignment? Well, for example, I'm constantly going into the audio mixer. It's a tool that I use all the time. However, there's no shortcut for it. What I like to do is to map a menu item to a button, which is what this command lets us do. What I'm going to do is with it selected, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on F3. Once it's active, what I'm going to do is simply navigate up to the tools drop down. I'm going to come down to audio mixer and I'm going to select it and now it will be mapped to F3 on the keyboard. So when I close both the keyboard settings and the command palette and I hit F3 on the keyboard, you'll now see that the audio mixer becomes available for me to use when working in my timeline. All right, so I think that's a good place to leave off for this lesson. Like I said, the keyboard setting is probably the most important setting you're gonna need to know, not only where it is, but the fact that it works in conjunction with the command palettes so that you can have all the shortcuts you need right at your fingertips. Now, as always, I want to remind you that if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media. I want to also give a big shout out and a big thanks to Video Guys for sponsoring this tutorial. Don't forget, if you're looking for Media Composer subscription licenses, you can check them out in the show notes below. Also, a big thank you to CineStudy. We're going to be working with all that footage. Remember to download the footage from the link in the show notes. You can start practicing along, getting your footage into Media Composer. Practice that transcoding to get everything the way that you like it. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that if you have any questions about any of these tutorials, please don't hesitate to post them in the notes down below. Or you can always send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.